Hey guys, so today I'm gonna be looking at people who trusted their gut feeling stories. So yeah, let's just get right into the video. Driving with a friend of mine through a pretty remote forest road. A couple of guys in the middle of nowhere tried flagging us down. I almost stepped for them before an alarm went off in my head and I stepped on the gas. We made it to a police station. Turns out there had been a bunch of people and vehicles going missing in the area that same week. <gasps> Oh my gosh. Honestly though, I don't know what I would do either. Like when you see someone in the middle of nowhere, especially when it's at night, you don't know whether you should give them a ride or if there's someone dangerous. Because honestly, I would be suspicious, okay? I would just be like, why? Like, why are you here in the middle of nowhere with, like, nothing, you know? And it's even scarier because we hear so many stories about this, like, people stopping and then they end up going missing. I honestly don't know what I would do because it's like, if you stop, what if they do something to you? And if you don't stop, what if something happens to them and they were genuinely just trying to get a ride, you know? And they had no bad intention, but, like, you don't know. I guess you just have to go off your gut feeling. Oh, I don't ever want to experience this, honestly. I was walking home and a woman approached me to ask for directions. I told her how to get where she wanted to go, but she didn't walk that way, but instead walked beside me and kept pace with me. <laughs> this feels like when you say bye to someone, but you guys still walk in the same direction. Okay, this made me incredibly uncomfortable, so I said, have a nice day, and doubled my speed, not running, but outpacing her significantly. A moment later, I heard running footsteps. I must have instinctively gripped my purse strap because I held onto it as she ran by and tried to snatch it. We ended up tussling for a moment. I shouted very loudly, help, she's stealing my purse. Neighbors came outside, causing her to walk away. She did not get my purse. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank gosh that woman was just trying to snatch the purse, you know, and like she didn't have any other weapons or something because that would have been very bad if she did. Honestly, my parents always just tell me to just let them have it <laughs> because it's like safety first kind of thing. It's like, well, you don't know how crazy they are and you don't know whether they have anything they're holding that can harm you, you know. So my parents are always just like, just let them have it. If anyone tries to snatch something, just let them have it. <laughs> That's what my parents have always told me because they're like, your life is more important than just a purse or something. But like, I don't know what I would do in that situation because you don't know what you would do unless you're in it and in that moment. But I feel like instinctively you would grab onto it, you know? Because when something crazy is happening, you don't really think logically. You're just like, oh no. <laughs> What do I do? I had a bad allergy season which turned into a bad sinus infection. It wasn't getting any better, so I got into a GP. He couldn't call it. As much as I hate hospitals, my gut was screeching at me that something was wrong. Went to the ER just in case. I had multiple pulmonary embolisms. I can't pronounce words. I had multiple pulmonary embolisms. One in three people with one undiagnosed PE don't make it to the ER. The doc said my lungs glowed in the CAT scan. On the upside, I have a strong heart, so I have that going for me. <gasps> Whoa, thank gosh they got themselves to the hospital. Honestly, for me, I'm just scared to go to the doctors or the hospital. I don't know. <laughs> It's honestly so annoying. I wish I was just one of those people who would just go to the doctors or like the hospital every time they thought something was wrong. But I'm not. I'm like the total opposite. Not me, but one of my best friends growing up. Her mom told me this story. They had just bought this house that had a built-in swimming pool. My friend had a little brother who was under the age of two at the time. Everyone was taking a nap, but unbeknownst to the rest of the house, the two-year-old had woken up and decided to go outside on their deck. I guess the mum woke up and had this terrible feeling come over her. Without hesitation, she quickly checked on her children. Panic set in when she couldn't find the two-year-old. She found him face down in the pool. He did survive the whole ordeal. If she wouldn't have felt that gut feeling to wake up, that little boy wouldn't be here today. <gasps> Whoa, oh, holy. I feel like even one second can change your life, you know? Oof, that is so scary. But what? How did the two-year-old even get out? Like the door was open or something? And there's like no gate around the pool or anything? I just feel like it's so risky when you have a pool in your house and also a baby. Like if you do, I feel like it's the best to have like a gate around it or something, just in case, you know? Just in case, because you never know. Babies are fast and curious. It's just crazy how often these kind of things happen, you know? 
My aunt's dog always gets anxious during storms and hides in the basement. There's not much she can do to comfort him, so at this point she doesn't usually bother trying and just waits for the storm to pass. But one night, about two years ago, there was a really awful storm while she was reading in her bedroom. She got a feeling that she had to go check on the dog right then and went down to the basement. While she was down there, a huge tree fell, smashing half her house. The bedroom she'd been reading in was completely destroyed. <gasps> Thank gosh she went to the dog. Thank gosh the dog wasn't in her room too. Because if they both were in that room, oh no. Thank gosh they were both okay. I was away on a trip in the mountains with my school. My roommates woke me up at like 3 a.m. and wanted to go skinny dip in the pool. I was fine until we got outside. It was pitch dark and the woods were abnormally silent. I've been camping and hiking a lot in my life, so I knew to trust my gut feeling and the sounds of the forest. I practically had to drag my friends back inside being sure to make noise the whole way. The next morning, we were kept inside for the morning because a huge black bear was outside strolling around. The prince showed that he had been there for hours, including the time that my friends and I were out. <gasps> oh, thank God for this friend, okay? Be around this friend. <laughs> Jeez, oh, ye. I love how the friend was like, nope, you guys are all coming back with me. And he wasn't like, you know what? You guys can go, I won't go. Because if you did that, Oh no. Not me, but a friend of mine. One night my friend was at a bar and he noticed he was getting the eye from a girl across the bar. Later on, when my friend was half drunk, she came over to him. He said he got serious red flags when she came over. My friend got up to go to the bathroom, came back out, saw her slipping something into his drink. He left right then and there. And I'm sure he's glad he did. Oh, wow. Man, trust nobody. Not sure what would have happened. It was my 10th birthday party and me and two friends were walking my neighbor home down the block. It was dark outside and getting a little late. The whole walk, I had a bad feeling about getting kidnapped. We even talked about it while walking her home. When we dropped her off, a car slowly started driving down the hill and it turned its brights on. One of my friends wanted to hide behind a car, but I didn't want to do that since they already seen us. The car pulls up. It's two guys, maybe in their late 20s or 30s. One is driving and the other is in the back seat. They pull up. The guy in the back gets out and we take off running up the hill from behind the parked car. Oh. <laughs> they were just like, nah, we're bolting it. What if they were just overthinking it, right? But I feel like overthinking it is better than not overthinking it and getting kidnapped. So it was still right of them just running away. It's better to be safe than sorry. I'm interviewing a guy for a job. Something doesn't feel right, but my interviewing partner really seemed to like him. We get to his portfolio of work and I see my side project that I worked on alone as one of his websites. <gasps> so I start asking him questions about it. What challenges he had, how the client was, etc. I let him go on and on. Then I say, I have to level with you. This is my work. You are showing me my own work. Look at the source I need the footer. It was my website in the comments. He went ghost white and I just sat there. After that, I coached him a little on how not to suck and he left. We called the contracting agency that sent him and let them know. <gasps> oh my goodness, that is so embarrassing. And out of everyone, the person that was interviewing him was the person that he stole the work from. Like, what are the chances? Man, that's crazy. So the person's gut feeling was just, this guy's off. There's something off about this guy. He wouldn't have thought that this would have happened, you know? Whoa. I kind of feel bad, but I don't. I just feel bad because it's so embarrassing. <laughs> There was a rural highway that had a few driveways on it. The car in front of me was making a left turn into a driveway and was waiting for a cross traffic to stop. I kind of leaned back and took a deep sigh and then immediately felt impending doom. My thought was, wouldn't it be freaky weird if I got into a car accident? Then a dump truck re-ended me at 70 miles per hour. By all means, I should be dead, but I actually walked away with nothing more than shattered glass ending up all over my face. Because a utility truck between us, I was saved from death. <gasps> wow. <sighs> Honestly though, sometimes I do have those weird thoughts, you know, like those questions where it's just like, oh my gosh, what if, but obviously I don't want it to happen. It's just like, oh my gosh, oh, it's like that feeling, you know, that's crazy. He was thinking it and it actually happened. Would it still have happened if he didn't think it? <laughs> Honestly, you can just never expect it from driving because you just don't know what's going to happen. All right. You can be doing everything you're right, but one person can be doing one thing wrong and something bad could just happen. I'm a type 1 diabetic. I began noticing that my kid was having a tough time potty training. He was drinking a lot and peeing a lot. I spoke with his pet about it and she dismissed it, saying we live in a warm area and toddlers are likely to drink more and therefore pee more and that I shouldn't hear hoof beats and assume zebras. 
What? I've never heard of that saying before. He had no other symptoms whatsoever. Happy, healthy looking little dude. I tried to calm myself down, but I just knew something wasn't right. Finally, I took one of his massively full pull-ups and used a keto strip to check his urine and then proceeded to head right to the hospital. He was diagnosed with diabetes in November 2015. Got him a new pediatrician immediately. <gasps> Whoa, oh man. Thank gosh for the gut feeling because there are so many stories about doctors just being like, you'll be fine, it's all right. And then it ends up not being all right, you know? So thank gosh for the gut feelings and they diagnosed him early so they could treat him early. Whew. It's so crazy because the one little thing you ignore could cost a life. Well, that's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Tell me in the comments down below what your thoughts are. And as always, thanks for watching. Hope you guys liked it. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.